Gary Witherford is known as racing's horse whisperer, or even the magic man. Over the past 30 years, he's built up a business from scratch, turning around problem horses. And some that he's worked with include some of the greats of the game, including See the Stars, Kingman, Gennati, and the Grey Gatsby. But just how does he do it? Well, we've come here to his base to find out. Very deep in the beautiful Wiltshire countryside, Gary's Westcourt Stables is an equine haven with its own indoor and outdoor schools, 38 loose boxes, 80 acres of grazing and private gallops. Over the past few years, Gary, his wife Suzanne and son Craig have built the business from scratch and they are now hugely well-respected members of the sport horse and racing communities. Gary's methods are based on natural horsemanship where he establishes a bond with the horse using the call-up technique, which he demonstrated for us, working with the Andalusian stallion, Brocco. So I'll go in to the left, and you'll see him change there, see that? So my body language is, is, is attacking him. But by the fact he's coming towards me, if I step towards him as well, look, you see he's, he's doing what stallions do, he's becoming aggressive again with the head shape, a bit like a bull where they start to stamp the foot and things like that. See exactly what, a, what a, 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 a stallion would do. He'd go, come on then, I'll have you. Because he, he knows from one side who's going to be number one. So, that, so I'm now just sort of saying, no, that's okay. I'm not moving until I decide what you're going to do. And he'll challenge me, his L's ears and, and what, and I'm just going, I'll tell you when, when it's time to do something. So I'll step forward. Every time I go a bit closer, you'll see that he's getting more and more aggressive to me. So, the worst thing you can do with a stallion is back off. If you back off a stallion, he'll, he'll, he'll charge you, um, like a bull would. So the more I step forward to him, the, challenging I'll, the more challenging I'm going to go to him. And I don't want him to, until I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to go in. You'll see the ear will lock onto me. So he's going to go left now, my left. See the ear? The ear is like radar, OK? So he, that's where he's looking. So his, one, his right ear is looking forward where he's going. And his left ear is on me, okay? So he's, he's watching me. In a second, I'm going to attack. So he's got to come around like an S shape, okay? So the next time around, I attack. Watch the ear. So I attack him this time. I become the hunter. Now he's got to turn and face me, look, and go to my right. But he's challenging me. He's going, no, I'm not going to. And I'm saying, you are. Now I come away from him, and he comes behind me. So I've changed direction controlled him. His other ear is locked onto me now, look. I let him go without any pressure. And I attack him next time round this time. He is locked on, front ear is going forward. I attack again. He's got to turn and face me, look. And then back behind me. Okay, this is where, if you like, the magic happens. He's gonna, I'm going to run at him next time round, but not as hard. He's going to turn and face me, like about where he was there. You see how he's got closer to me? I attack. There you go. Now you look for the lick and chew, where he starts to communicate. He's now eyeballing me. There's a the lick and chew. So he's now communicating, talking. OK, OK, OK. The next thing you want is a blow, where they start to blow an arch. And he's desperate for him to come to me. And I'm going, nah, I don't want you yet. There's the blow. So I've said, OK. Now you can come to me. So one kiss. There you go. One kiss and he'll follow. And you see all that nose blowing and the coughing. That's not him because he's got a cough. That's him communicating and pacifying and starting to come to me. Head down, passive movement. So now what I do is get him into the centre where I want him to be. And a kiss moves, means move. It doesn't mean come, it means move. And you'll notice with how I work with horses, you'll see I never pat them. I always scratch them like they would in the wild. So this is the, the, the bonding mode with the stallion. Is that he's got number one and he's number two, now grooming him. He goes, oh yeah, man. Uh -huh. So this will show you 
Well, he taught me about horses that don't want to be lead, led from the shoulder. If I stood at his shoulder, look, how can he be a leader? As in, how can I be a leader? He's in front of me. But you'll see how he'll change from being quite a, a soft horse who wants to be scratched and everything else to being an aggressive horse again. As soon as I asked him, if I picked up, as soon as I got hold of him, look, he goes, no, I want to follow you. And you say, come on. Now watch him change. Watch his mouth. He's taking the pressure off himself. He's, he's talking. And he's saying with his mouth, look, I don't want to be in front of you. Look, see that, that mouth, he's taking the pressure with his tongue and his end of his, and he's saying, no, he's licking there, but grounding his teeth to say, look, I can't go any, I don't want to go upside you. Every time I try to walk behind him, look, he goes, no. And very soon, he gets aggressive, but he doesn't want to. Now I ask him to go forward, he'll walk forward. If I stop, he'll stop. If I go back, he'll go back. And the reason why they do that is he's a flight animal and he's a hunted animal. The most important thing to him is his legs. So if you see two horses in the field, they don't know each other, they don't get close, but they can't afford to get kicked. So if I kicked him, look, he can't, he can't, do, he can't be kicked because he's going to become lame then. So then the hunters, the lions, the tigers, the, the wolves, or whatever, will take out the sick, the old, and the lame. And this is what he doesn't, can't afford to do. The whole process took just under 20 minutes. And it is using these skills that Gary and his team work all of the horses in their care including some priceless racehorses. Once the bond is established, he's able to ask the horse to do almost anything, even when it comes to getting to know some initially very scary plastic. But you have to work the horse and say to the horse, look, this is what I want. I want to catch you. So the body will change, and I'm showing him what I want. And then he'll start to walk towards you, see? My body's getting him to walk towards me, but he knows he's going to get caught. So he's gone from a horse that didn't want to get caught to a horse that wants to get caught. So now I just drop the rope on the floor to say, look, this is what I want you to do. And you catch him. From a horse that didn't want to get caught to a horse that is going to get caught. Now the fact is that I've put that halter on him. It's a bit like the, the, the guide dog to the blind. You know, when it's in harness, it's working. So what I've done is put him in harness. So from a horse who didn't want to be, have that plastic, I'll pick up that plastic now, watch him. He'll take it. From a horse being being loose, but it's not because he's frightened, I'll put it on him and go, look, you can take that plastic. So the plastic's gone to a point where it's on him, and it doesn't fight. so he's gone from a point where he didn't want it to being wrapped up in it. One of the Witherford team's main roles is the vital job that they do in the stalls, and they are a regular sight on the racecourses of Britain and Ireland. On the morning of our visit, an unraced colt trained by Rod Millman had his first trial with the team and passed with flying colours. So we pinned down Gary to ask exactly how he does it. When they come into the, into the yard, they are here um, to because they've got problems with the stalls, like that one rears up. Basically, it's all, everything we do is pressure release, and you'll see us around it, we use the tappers and just tap, 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 encourage the horse to come forward, and then we put more pressure onto the horse. As when the horse goes into the stalls, we start shaking the stalls, and it takes the, the, br the brain of the horse, will get off the, the like it's in a, in a stall. It will say, hang on, what's going on here? And it actually almost freezes, and it gets the confidence of the, the animal to stand there, whatever happening. But it's no good you going in and taking your own horse in there, and it just stands there, and then all of a sudden it rears up, because another horse is doing it. Um, you'll find when you go to the races, you, you'll get a, that one horse go in, lovely and quiet, another one comes next to it, bang, it upsets them more. So it's like a ricochet reaction. So you have to dot the I's and cross the T's, if you like, and the horse will then trust you and, and work with you. And the more you do with it, the, the, the more trust in it gets of you. Another huge part of Gary's work is training youngsters and getting them used to being ridden. He is especially busy after the yearling sales and says that this is one of the most rewarding aspects of the job. Babies are great, you know, we break here or if, like I like to call it start, I don't like the word breaking, it's a horrible word just to think I'll break a horse. You don't want to break a horse, you want to get a horse to work for you, so I call it starting. Um, yeah, I mean we do anything between sort of six to eight hundred um, yearlings uh, and older horses, we start them on their future life and it's, it's great to see the babies come in and go away and doing the job and they're, they're, I would say 99.9% .9 of them are started within 20 minutes. 
So, and if you get a difficult one, you can, you know, it might take you two sessions or, as you saw this morning, the, you know, it's the third day that they were going in, you get one of them and by the time they're coming out, they're going around the, 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 the canter ring there, nice and happy. Over the past three decades, Gary and his team have worked with plenty of talented but troublesome equine stars. So which one is he most proud of? One of the, the ones I've, uh, I enjoyed doing was a horse called Spanish Moon, was one of Michael Stout's, and it was being banned from, from uh, training over here, as in racing over here, and uh, because he wouldn't enter the stalls. And we worked, and I said to Michael, "Don't throw him away. You know, just um, let, let's have a work, and let's take him to France, and we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll win." Then we went on to win a, win a group three and a group one, I think, and he went over around the world and, and he trained, um, and he went on and done a great job and that was a real sense of achievement because you know and it, it actually put a bit of an egg on our faces over here that the fact is that we could take him somewhere else and, and win group group ones with him you know Hong Kong and places like that and we we couldn't race him over here which is a real shame but things it's something I'm trying to bring into into racing is to change the way that horses are loaded I don't like to see horses being picked up with four five six people and shove them into the stalls it's not good for our sport you know so I love them when they just walk in and they do the job and they just stand there because they want to stand there uh, or they they're trained well enough to stand there uh, for two or three minutes so it takes you know it, it takes a bit of training and I, I love training people to do this as well so we're getting there and it, every change a bit of change in, 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 in the world it, it always takes time so it's, it might not be in my lifetime it might be in my son's lifetime hopefully <laughs> Gary's instinctive way with horses has come about through years of working with them a passion which dates right back to his childhood a very early age I always thought I wanted to work with animals and I, you know I, when I was going through um, my younger life it was like well would it be a, a in a zoo or something, or, but it was always horses. My father was in Singapore and I used to sit down and watch Cowboys in Indian, John Wayne, just to see him because they didn't have horses in Singapore. So I used to sit and watch the cowboy films and watch the horses and, and then um, th things happened in my life uh, which I was, I was abused and things like that as a childhood, as, as in my childhood, which threw me even deeper into horses. Uh, and my whole thing is that humans can hurt you, but uh, these animals can't and it doesn't matter how big they are, they, they want to work for you rather than against you and, and I just threw myself into it and understanding more about them and, and why they do it. You know, I never wanted to be a jockey, I was always too heavy to be a jockey and, and, and there was a guy called Eric Wheeler who was a trainer then when I worked at Stamina and said look you know you're good with these, these tricky horses and could you sort of specialise as in go and do them and we'll carry on training and I yeah, loved it and, uh, and I then started to, to, to break all the babies. So it's all part of what I did, you know, from a young age, I just wanted to get into their brains rather than just want to sit on them and ride them. I want to see why they reared or why they bolted or why they didn't want to go over that jump. Surely, over three decades in the business, there has been one horse that has not succumbed to the Witherford way. Not the case, says the boss. Never. It's, it's I mean, touch wood. I mean, there's going to be horses. I'm not, I'm, uh, no illusion. I think the day that you think that you know it all about horses, it's the day that you want to pack up because I learn, you know, and I'm taught, or I'm learning things every single day, you know, I'm never under any illusions that this is, you know, this is the way we do it. Because every, sometimes if you have a method like A, B, C, D, E, you, you, you know, then, you know, it, it doesn't work like that. You're different than me, I'm different than you, I'm different than, we're all different. And so it's important that the animal, you, you pick up on the animal that he's not, he's different as well. So sometimes you, you've got to go from A to D and then back to B and then work it out and you have to understand how they are and how they work and their brain works, you know, it's, it's, they're all different. A morning at the Witherfords taught well us that, although back. Gary and Ready? his team might not exactly be well magic, their ways of working horses are certainly pretty special. There's a good boy.